Hi and welcome back to my channel UiPath with Yibbe. Today we're looking at something very specific in computer vision and that is scrolling within computer vision. And before we start, if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That would be a very big help. And also, if you want to see more of my videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when I put out more videos. But we're here to talk about scrolling in computer vision, so let's get to it. So I have a couple of windows open here on my screen, and one is, of course, UiPath Studio in an empty project, and the other is a remote desktop connection to a remote computer. And on this remote computer, I have a couple of shortcuts here on the desktop. And the first one is this test HTML file. And if we open that, we can see that it appears to be empty, but it isn't. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see it says hello world. And if we scroll down just a little bit more, we can see that there's another uh, text here that says, hey, how are you doing? And then at the very bottom, we have a table. And that table is actually a, a table that can scroll, right? So. Let's try to capture some of these elements um, from our automation on our development machine. So back on my uh, development computer here, what I would usually do is use a use application or browser activity. And then I would indicate that application uh, using this link here in the activity. And as soon as I do that, we can see that it says that there is a remote communication error. Click for more information. And that's because we cannot automate something on a remote desktop computer without having the UiPath remote runtime installed. And in this instance, we don't have that installed on the remote computer and it's not an option. So we have to do something else. So I will cancel out of that. And then in my browser window, I'm just going to scroll to the very top so that the elements disappear. Then back inside of UiPath Studio, I'm going to delete the use application or browser activity and instead insert a computer vision screen scope activity. And that will ask us again to indicate on screen what is the scope of our automation? What is it we want to be able to interact with? So I'll click the link here in the activity. Then I'll click the remote desktop computer again. And what the computer does now is it tries to identify the screen elements that I might be able to interact with. So if I click this menu and click the show informative screenshot, then we can see what elements it found um, on the screen that we can click on or read text from and so forth. And it found some buttons in the browser uh, toolbar. It found the URL, it found the start button and whatever I have in the taskbar. You know, it found whatever it can see on the screen. The problem here is it cannot see what is further down on the page. So how do we get to automate that? Will we do that by using the new scrolling function? So I will just cancel out of the screenshot. And usually I would insert a normal get text activity but because we're using computer vision, I need to insert a computer vision or CV get text activity. So I'll insert that inside of my CV screen scope. And then I'll need to indicate the element on the screen that I want to extract text from. And if you remember from just a second ago, we don't have the elements on the screen that we really want to get to. So let's try it anyways. So I'll click the indicate on scope uh, link. And now it'll show us the screen scope from before, and I cannot scroll up and down to get to the elements that are further down on the page. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to click this delayed screen refresh option. And once I do that, in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see a small clock, and that will be counting down. And when it reaches zero, it's going to create another screenshot or screen scope. So let's try and do that. And what you'll notice is when I scroll, that countdown will reset every time the screen moves. And only when I hold still and stay at the same position on the web page will the actual screenshot and screen scope be generated. So let's try and click it. And we'll see the counter. And I'll start scrolling on the web page. And we can see the web page or the counter reset. And now that we have both uh, elements in scope, we'll just wait. And now it generated a screen scope. And now if I hover my mouse, I can see that it found these two elements. So the element that we want to extract is going to be this, hey, how are you doing text? So I'll click it. And it's not able to identify just from the text. So I'll indicate an anchor. And that will be my hello world text up here. And now everything is good. And it is able to extract, hopefully, the text that we wanted to extract. So we'll save that text to a variable. I'll create a new variable called We'll just call it my value. And then I'll just uh, do a message box with the contents of that variable. There we go. Now on the web page here on my secondary computer, the remote computer, I'll scroll to the top 
and then we will run the automation and see what happens. So we'll see the uh, browser or the remote desktop window uh, appear. And within a second or two, it should start scrolling down the page to look for that second screen scope that we generated. So it scrolls, and now it should have found the, well, there we go. It found both of those text elements. So the one that we wanted to extract and the anchor, and now it displays a message box with the, hey, how you doing text. So I think this is kind of cool. But what about the table that we have further down the page? What if we want to extract data from that? Well, the process is more or less the same. So I'm just going to delete the message box and the computer vision get text activity. And then instead I'm going to insert a computer vision extract table activity. Again, I'll need to indicate on the original screen scope where that table is. Now, if we go back to the page and scroll to the top, go back into studio and then click the indicate on scope link. We have the same situation as before. We cannot see the table that we want to extract data from. So we'll click the delayed uh, screen refresh button over here. And then I'll scroll down the page until I find the table that we want to extract data from. And once we find the table, we pause. And now if we hover the mouse over the table over here, we can see that it actually detects this table. So we'll click it. And back inside of Studio, I'm going to save the results of this computer vision extract table activity to a new data table. I'll press Control K, create a variable called DT, we'll call it states because it contains names of states. And what I'll then do is I will insert a right range uh, workbook activity. And we will point to this workbook that I have here on my uh, development computer desktop. I'll just point to that, that is on the desktop and it's called states dot xlsx click open if i just open this file we can see that it is completely empty there's nothing in it so i'll close it again i know that the sheet that we want to save stuff in is called states and the data table that we want to save into that sheet is called dt states because we just created that so back inside of the remote machine we'll scroll to the top jump back to studio and run the automation Once we get back to the remote machine, we'll see that the automation is going to start scrolling the page until it hopefully finds our table. And once it finds the table at the bottom of the page, it's going to extract data from that table. And then the automation will end. And if we look at our state's uh, Excel file now, we will see that stuff is missing. We only extracted Alaska and Arizona. And why is that? Well, first I'll just uh, delete that data exit and save the sheet so it's empty again. And if we look at uh, the remote machine here, we can see that while well, it didn't uh, really uh, read all of the table, it only took uh, a couple of things. It didn't take Alabama for some reason, and I'll get back to that in just a second. And apart from Alabama, the only states that it could see because it operates on vision is Alaska and Arizona. So we need to do something more. And that something is we need to go back to the extract table activity. And we can see that there's a small warning up here that says that we recommend setting the scrollable table to true. Um, and we will go down and we will find that property. And it is down here at the bottom. We will set it to true. And also the add headers option up here is set to true. And combined with the right uh, range workbook having the add headers not set to true, uh, that's going to mess things up. And that is why we missed the first state, Alabama. So in the extract table activity, we're going to not add headers. So now if we back in the browser, scroll to the top just to reset things and then run the automation again. We should see in the browser that it scrolls to the bottom of the, the page to find the table. And once it finds the table, what we should be able to see is scrolling inside of the table so that it gets to extract all of the all of the states. And we can see that it scrolls inside of the table and now the automation is finished. And if we open the states uh, Excel file, we should be able to see all of the states that were in the table. So um, one question that you might ask is, what if we have a table where everything does not appear at once? So if we go back to our remote desktop machine and open this page, 
This is my UiPath uh, YouTube channel. And uh, this is the videos page. And we can see if we look at the scroll bar over here, that if we keep scrolling on it, we will see that the scroll bar will reduce in size, meaning that it's going to load more videos. So every time I get to the bottom of the list, it loads more videos. And, and I have, I think, about 80 videos now, so make sure you check those out. But let's say we want to um, click one of the videos that are sort of down here at the bottom of the page. For example, the how to use all data table activities that we have here on the left. Well, let's just close the page and open it again so we are sure that we haven't sort of preloaded all of the videos. So now we can see again that we only have a small portion of my videos listed. And then I will go back into Studio, and then I will delete the right uh, range activity and also the computer vision extract table activity, and now do a computer vision click activity. So our goal is to find that data table video and then click it to see that video. What we also need to do is we need to completely uh, rescope the entire computer vision screen scope activity here because before it was looking at this uh, text HTML file. And now we're looking at something else. So I'll indicate on scope to indicate that this is basically a new page. And then when I want to uh, indicate the element within that scope, again, we'll see that, you know, only a very small portion of elements are available. And I can't scroll in uh, the web page until I click the delayed screen refresh button. Now I can keep scrolling and the countdown in the top left is going to keep resetting while I'm still scrolling. Then when we find the data table activities video, we'll just stop there. It's going to detect the elements. I will just click the link here. And now it knows how to find that data tables video inside of that long, lazy loading web page. So just to be sure, we will again close the web page and reopen it so we are sure that it hasn't preloaded any of the stuff that is down at the bottom of the page. Then we'll go back into Studio, run the automation, and see what happens when we jump back into the remote machine. Hopefully, it will scroll down the page, and the page will load the remaining videos, and then we'll click the right button. Now, it's a little bit slow when doing this, and I am running on the default options of scrolling at an interval of two scrolls, so to speak. And that means it's going to, well, scroll a little bit slower. You could increase that, uh, that value and have it scroll a little bit quicker. But now we get to the bottom. We'll see that it's going to load more videos. There we go. And it's going to keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And hopefully before too long, we will see the data table activities video. There we go. And now it should click that video and jump back into studio. Let's see a tourist TV. And we can see that over here, it actually started showing the ads for that video. So this was just a quick look at computer vision scrolling and how it supports it. I have heard rumors that there are more features, scrolling features coming to computer vision in 2023, probably not in the first half of the year, but maybe in the October release. So keep an eye out for that. Also, make sure again to subscribe to my channel. I'm glad you watched the video. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And until next time, stay safe and take care. Bye bye.